It's like a man bun, but in the front, and it's what I'm calling oh man horn. My <laughs> God, it's like a un new unicorn look. Yo, 2020, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> What do you uh, what do you have here, James? I cooked some taco meat, mixed it with some tostito, tostito salsa con queso. <laughs> now I put it in a taco. <laughs> oh my god! Just oh my god! <laughs> oh, Just, this is. Oh, I'm sure it tastes delicious. <laughs> So in this box, I have a bunch of photos that I took over two years ago when I was doing my little 35 millimeter film uh, project. So when I was learning how to shoot film photography and I was getting these photos developed, every single time I'd also get the 5x7 prints printed out with them and all those photos I would store away in this shoebox. And that was one of the reasons why I was interested in doing film photography is because I wanted to like kind of take it back to the old times. Um, whenever you got film developed, you had the physical photos, you'd store them away in a shoebox, and later on you'd kind of stumble upon them and be able to open it up and, and look through some of the photos that, that you had in physical format. And it's kind of one of those experiences that you don't really get when you have a lot of digital photos, especially on your phone. Um, you don't really get those opportunities to just go back to something physical and just whip out a box and just take a look at any old random photo. Uh, sometimes when you switch and change phones, you end up losing all the photos in your phone. You forget to back it up or actually put it onto a hard drive and save it. And I kind of like this aspect. I like being able to take this box out and uh, take a look at some of these photos that I took. Um, so a lot of these photos are just random shots out on the streets of New York, but I kind of wish a lot more of these photos were of me and my friends so I could kind of remember um, those times that, that we were hanging out and all. So I started doing this and actually getting these photos printed out is a little expensive too if you always get prints of them. Um, so I did want to figure out a way to transfer this into a digital sense in a way that I wouldn't lose these photos and at any time I could always go back and take a look at them. So I wanted to see how I could replicate that shoebox with physical photos on it in a digital sense. So I decided to build a dedicated computer that would serve as my digital archive of not just photos but also all the videos that I've been taking uh, because there's a lot of them and I want to be able to save them and be able to go to a singular place and be able to look all that stuff up and be able to remember all of those times that I captured on the camera. So I wanted to just take you through a very brief rundown of the build of the computer and how I use it here at my home workstation to archive all of my photos and videos not just from my cameras but also from my phones. So the first thing that you'll notice is that it is a very discrete tower. It's small, it's a micro ATX, and I did that on purpose because it really is just my archive computer. I didn't want anything fancy and I wasn't trying to do anything crazy with video cards or anything like that. I just wanted to be able to fit a bunch of hard drives in there. 
uh, which is why I got this just sleek, simple black box micro ATX Rosewell Tower. And in here I have the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G uh, CPU because it's got a built-in video card in it. I wouldn't need to buy a video card for this computer either. Um, and I basically have 16 gigabytes of RAM and whatever PSU uh, to power all of this. So very simple. Uh, you don't need to get a dedicated computer to be able to do this. You could just buy a 10 terabyte hard drive and call it a day and just plug that into your main computer. Uh, but I kind of just wanted a completely separate box from uh, the computer that I work on every single day, which is my MacBook, just in case that crashes while I'm using it. So here at my home workstation, you'll notice that I have one monitor, an Apple display here that is connected to my MacBook Pro on the vertical stand in the back. Uh, so you're probably wondering how I connect to my PC here at my desk. And I do that through my MacBook Pro on a program called Microsoft Remote Desktop. And that allows me to remotely connect to the PC through Ethernet um, on my MacBook Pro. So that's how I open up the computer, be able to interact with the desktop as though I'm directly on the computer, uh, open up the files, drop some files in, and then also shut it down uh, when it's done. Now, in my computer, I also have a total of three hard drives in there currently. One is a 500 gigabyte solid state drive, which holds the operating system windows. And then I have two storage hard drives. So one of them is two terabytes. It's a Western Digital hard drive. Uh, and then I also have a 10 terabyte Western Digital hard drive in there as well. So I will take you through a very quick tour of how I organize my videos and my photos in these hard drives. And it's very simple. I just have it organized by year. Uh, and then it goes directly down to the date. And these are just basically grouped by a uh, photo session. So anytime I have a whole bunch of set of photos from one particular day or maybe even a weekend, um, I'll dump all of the photos from that session into a singular fol uh, folder for that entire group of photos. I don't drill it down any further than that because that would take up way too much time that I'm willing to uh, set aside to um, categorize the stuff. Maybe I will go in uh, later on and further categorize it, but right now I don't really see a need for it. Um, but both my videos and my photos are organized in this fashion. So that's it. Like I said, it is nothing too complicated, but it is just a digital way to save all of the digital photos that I take um, and also videos that can't really print out and put in a box. But I kind of want to go back to doing this and uh, taking more film photos and also uh, spending a little extra to get them printed up and being able to store them in shoe boxes because there really is going to be no replacement for being able to open one of these and just randomly flip through photos and be surprised by something that you forgot you took a photo of but was nice to remember um, in a physical sense. Yeah.